right up there. It's great. They got a couple of award-winning beers, um, some of which I've actually tried before. Uh, and I actually live right across from a brewery. Uh, I live close to Half Acre, too. Some really great stuff in Chicago. Uh, and this is right up there, too. It's really great stuff, especially the stouts I've been trying today and then the barley wine. I'm Darcy Cody, and I am the tasting room and hospitality manager here at Pearl Street Brewery. I used to not drink any beer at all, but ever since I tried the Downtown Brown, the DTV Brown Ale, I have become a big fan of beer. Since then, I've gravitated towards more hoppy beers. I love coming in the brewery in the morning, though, and smelling the malt brewing. It's my favorite. Uh, my name is Caleb Kozla. I'm, uh, I'm a cellarman. That's my technical title. But I do a lot of other stuff around here. I do distribution, I do packaging, tours, uh, merchandising sometimes, bartend on occasion. I'm a jack of all trades, master of none. Uh, Joe Kachaver, brewmaster and founder of Pearl Street Brewery. Well, I, you know, I spent some time out, out west and I, I kind of wanted to get back to, uh, back to Wisconsin where I was born and raised and uh, opportunity presented itself and uh, ended up back in La Crosse. Um, when we first acquired this cool old building, um, you know, we did, our first order of business was getting the building fixed up so we could use it for a brewery, getting our equipment in here. And then our tap room actually didn't come till you know, maybe a year, year and a half after that. Uh, my dad and I founded the Pearl Street Brewery in 99, but we wanted to, uh, really enjoy being part of the community of La Crosse. And if you're from La Crosse, you know where Pearl Street is. It's, it's, right, it's, it's only a street that's only two blocks long. It's right in the heart of downtown. It goes you know, from the river up to 4th Street. And, it's, and it's, uh, it's got a lot of old historic buildings on it. And it's part of the history of La Crosse. So I thought that was a good name. Came with some family to retrace the steps that my grandma grew up in. She actually uh, uh, worked here in 1955-56. This was my first job. I worked in the office at the rubber mills and I was telling my grandson my job at that time was going through picking up things from different departments so I had to walk through every department and being a high school girl just out of high school I got a lot of whistles back in those days from the guys working on the line. But it was, it was a big plant. In fact, our father, years ago, worked at the rubber mills back in the 30s, and he could not take the smell of the place. But this was quite the place back in the 50s and 60s. This building uh, was built um, in the early 1900s. It housed the uh, La Crosse Footwear uh, building, which was um, originally called La Crosse Rubber Mills. Sometime in the 80s, they changed their name to La Crosse Footwear. I think it's cool to be in this building because there's a lot of history here. There's a lot of people that worked here themselves or they had family members that might have spent their entire working lives here in this building. It's got a lot of history for La Crosse. At one point, it was one of the biggest uh, employers in, in, in the city. And um, it's really great to be part of that heritage. We still get a lot of old timers in here that uh, you know, that tell stories about how they worked right here where our brewery is now, you know, 30 years ago and they, and they were making rubber boots or they were making hip waders or raincoats, you know, all that kind of stuff. A lot of that was made right here in this factory building, so we're, we're really liking it. And it's huge, so yeah, we do have a lot of room to expand and grow and that's our plan. Yep, this is a four-story building. Um, we don't use all four stories, um, but um, as we grow and expand our brewery and we have new, you know, new equipment and new people in here, they're all going to need a place. So, uh, we have a lot of room for growth and we're in a good spot for that. Other than a, you know, a couple years during our transition uh, phase between um, downtown and, our, and this location here, um, other than a couple years in there, we've been growing consistently every year. And a big growth spurt for us happened when we started bottling beer because for the first eight years of Pearl Street Brewery, we only did draft beer. Uh, we started out, like I, like I said, in the brew pub situation. So it was all draft, it was all tap beer. Um, and then we had a bottling line. We were able to finally expand out outside of, you know, just the Western Wisconsin uh, region here. We'll take them off. We'll make up another 24. Six bottles will advance down the line here. 
This will come down, grab all those bottles around the collar, and then those straws will plunge into the bottles, purging out the atmospheric air with sterile CO2. It'll then start filling with fresh, clean beer out of the bright tank. And once it hits a fill sensor, it'll pop up and it'll cap underneath there. Well, you know, this was built in 2001. Uh, this was built, I think, before the Japanese bomb Pearl Harbor. This is just cast iron and grease. It works like a champ. So this is where they'll get a label. The label will then get smoothed around in the brushes. It'll come around the corner. It'll get a date code sprayed right here. And my buddy Jesse, who works on the line with me, he'll be standing right here with an empty case as the bottles come down the line. We started at a seven barrel brewery. It's like 200 gallons of beer. And uh, we grew into this size a few years later. This is a 20 barrel brew house, which is about 650 gallons. And we double batch our beers. So what that means is in a day we brew twice for each batch. And these are 40 barrel fermenters behind me. And uh, so that'd be about 1,300 gallons of beer. M much of this equipment came from a brewery that grew in uh, Colorado, a brewery called New Belgium. This was some of their original equipment and they have, they've grown to be a much larger brewery. Other stuff came from other breweries. Some of it we uh, had custom made for us. It is all over the place. When we have people coming in that are traveling from out of town, I try to get a feel for what kind of beers they like to what I should give them. Um, we have some people who are stuck in their ways and they just want a lager, your lightest beer that you have. I try to get them to try the DTB brown ale. Um, sometimes we have in some ladies who don't like to drink beer. I also try to persuade them to try a DTB brown ale, thinking I can turn them a little bit, but um, then we have our regular customers who are Pearl Street Pale Ale drinkers and they come in for that regularly. When we first opened in December of 1999, I had uh, three beers. It was our uh, Brown Ale, Pearl Street Pale Ale, and a beer called Wayward Irish Red. Those were the first three beers that we threw out at a big party, the mayor was there, TV people were there, and we tapped up those beers, and two out of the three of those have, have uh, stuck around this whole time. So uh, one of them is still our brown ale, kind of a local favorite, and it's grown to be a favorite around the state of Wisconsin. We actually brew a lot of brown ale here, uh, more so than any of our other beers. So that's, that beer's just got its own personality. People like it for what it is. I've, we've never really tried to promote that beer, tried to push it, and and you know, run specials on it and get people to drink it, it's taken off uh, by itself. And, and a Pearl Street Pale Ale is, is, a, is a close second. And so we brewed the brown, we brewed the pale, uh, we brewed our, uh, that's what I'm talking about, organic rolled oat stout, and that was a big, uh, big favorite too. And we brewed just those beers for a while. And then in the summer we brew our El Jefe wheat beer because people love that one in the summertime. And uh, that was it for a little while. And then we put the tasting room in, maybe a year, year and a half later, put in eight tap lines, and now we keep them all full. We're actually gonna be adding some more tap lines here pretty soon. Constantly rotating uh, seasonals, specialty beers, limited release beers. So we're back, uh, kind of have the best of both worlds. We are cranking out a lot of our, of our big sellers that are, that are out there, the flagships that are, that are um, really paying the bills and that are widely accepted and people really like them. And then we're also able to produce a lot of fun beers, a lot of double IPAs and barrel aged beers and sours and stuff like that. So we have a lot of fun with it. People don't come here just to drink and get drunk. People come here to talk beer, learn beer, experience beer, and when they come and they see a lady behind the bar, they're very impressed by the knowledge that we're able to give them. I, I would say anybody at home that wanted to work in a brewery, just have a good attitude. You know, it's some days are short, some days are really long. It's what you make of it, though. 